Welcome to PV Garage, I'm Sean, and today we're gonna to be diving into rebuilding my 2.7 for the 2.7 build-off challenge that we're doing, so stick around and we're gonna have a look at, uh, sorry, not, we're gonna be having a look at my 2.7 build. Now I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you guys, this thing's been sitting here for quite a long time. So long, in fact, that I don't have any video of me taking it apart initially. So what we're gonna launch into is sort of halfway through the process, if not more than halfway through the process. And then I'll just show you guys how to clean the block up. Now one of the things I do wanna show you guys before we get into this, as I was disassembling this block, I came across this. And this is the oil pickup screen in the oil pan. And you can see all this orange goop in there. And this is a perfect example of something that really ticks me off. When you guys are assembling motors, you don't need to goop everything like crazy because this is exactly what happens. All that goop ends up falling off inside the motor, ending up in the pickup screen, and then can really ruin your day. So now back onto the motor, I'm gonna finish removing anything that's still on the block that can be removed. So I'm taking off some coolant lines, some oil feed uh, lines here. And then I'm getting in there with a vacuum cleaner and a scraper just to try and get all the gunk that ends up in the valley between the banks of cylinders there. Next up, I'm just gonna cut myself a little piece of cardboard to catch all the brake cleaner that's gonna be dripping off the motor as I'm cleaning it, remove any remaining hardware. And then I like to go over first with a wire wheel just to get anything that's loose off and see where I need to get in a little bit harder with the scraper. Once that's done, hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner and uh, degreaser and get in there and try to get all the oils out of the, out of the block so that it'll accept paint. Then with the wire wheel, just clean everything up one last time, make sure you get everything that's loose. And then just to continue with the cleaning before I hit anything with paint, I figured I should clean up the tops of the pistons and the mating surface for my head gasket. It's just that easy. Now next up I needed to get at the back of the motor there and I'm gonna do the rear main seal while I'm at it, but that meant taking it off the engine stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape up my mating surface for the bell housing there because I don't wanna get any paint so I don't have that thickness that might prevent the bell housing from sitting flat on the, on the block. So I'm gonna go through, tape everything up, trim the excess, and then I'll be able to hit it with a bit of paint. Now with that painted up, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that rear main seal, just cleaning the mating surface for the flange that holds that seal. Now here I'm using acetone because it dries really quickly and makes sure that the surface is clean so that, so that I won't have any uh, bits of grease or anything like that on the surface that'll cause a leak later. Now you do wanna be careful with your selection of rear main seal because there's a couple different styles. Now this one has a Teflon, it has a, tef a layer of Teflon, I guess, on the inside edge of that rear main seal, so it has to go on dry. But if you have a different style of rear main seal, you may have to put a little bit of lubricant on. So just make sure you read the information that comes with the seal that you purchase. And I'm just gonna put my hardware back in and spin it in just kind of finger tight, very light at this point. Okay, I've gone and installed my new rear main seal. I've got a new flange, which is a cortical part, and it came preloaded with 
a Teflon rear main seal. I've got an L-ring gasket underneath that. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I got this kit from ECS. I did order these parts quite a long time ago. So now I'm about to go through and uh, tighten my bolts up here. I'm gonna set them to 10 Newton meters, which ends up being, um, on this one, I think it's 103 kilogram centimeters, which is the scale that I have on my torque wrench. Um, I'm not sure how many inch pounds that is, but I'm gonna go through, tighten those all up. I couldn't find a pattern for tightening anywhere, so I'm just gonna do a sort of a crisscross, and that should be good. Okay, so I've got my block painted up nice now. The next thing to do before I keep assembling this motor is I need to deal with a little bit of the damage on the, hit, the pistons here. And a little bit of backstory on this motor. So when I bought this, it was just um, out of a guy's garage. He had already taken it out of a car. And when I took the cylinder heads off, I noticed this damage on the pistons from piston to valve contact, usually from the timing belt breaking and the cylinder heads that were on the car had good valves. So that tells me that after this damage occurred, that the engine was fixed. After that was all fixed, they continued to run this motor. So this motor was in service after those repairs were done. That tells me a couple of things. It tells me that chances are the rods are probably okay. And another thing that I did to double check that is I measured the heights of all the tops of the pistons to the deck here and everything checked out all even so I know that the rods are probably not compromised. The next step, I'm just going to uh, clean up these little divots a little bit and smooth them. And the reason I'm doing that is because this little lip, you get heat buildup on that little lip there and it can cause detonation. And we don't want that because that just makes the ECU back the timing away and you end up with less power. Now what I'm gonna do before I do any work on that, first I'm gonna tape up the other cylinders and I'm gonna tape up uh, where that gap to the ring is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna use my rotary tool here and I'm just gonna come in and just lightly clean that up. Now, I wanna point out that I'm using this double cut carbide to remove some of that material. And the reason I'm opting for that instead of like a sanding drum or instead of using one of those little stones is because there is a chance that's, that some debris, even though I'm gonna tape everything up, there is a chance that some of the that uh, debris, that piston material here, could end up in the gap between the cylinder wall and the piston. It's unlikely, especially if I do a good job taping everything up, but it could happen. And if it's just an aluminum shaving that ends up in that little gap there, you've got a cast iron cylinder wall and you've got a steel ring. And if you have an aluminum particle in there, good chance that it that it's not going to damage the motor because it's not going to be able it's going to lose that battle basically between the steel ring and the and the uh, cast iron cylinder wall whereas if i were to use a sanding drum or if i was using one of those little stones to clean that up the particles from that are actually much harder than the iron the steel and the aluminum so they could do some real damage if you get sand and grit in that little gap there they could do some real damage once this motor's run Turned out okay, I've done better, but uh, no high points, no sharp edges, just the little divots.
Well, guys, I think that's it for today. This block's ready to have a bunch more parts put on it. Make sure you tune in next time because we're going to be looking at, I'm preparing some 2.8 heads to use on the 2.7. They've got much bigger inlet ports and should flow a lot better than the stock 2.7 heads. But there's a few things we got to do to them to get them ready to put on that motor. So tune in for that. We're going to be digging into those and doing a bunch of work. Thanks.